so what you guys are going to do is these are just some random ones I have in my folder. <laughs> um, you guys are going to take a photograph and divide it into at least three layers or sections of buildings. And we're going to use the pen tool and we're going to trace the buildings, um, kind of connecting the dots like with the pen tool. Um, you can for areas like with circles and curves like this would look a little bit neater because if you notice their circles not perfect. You can kind of skip over areas like that just make a straight line and then take an actual circle shape that's the same color and use like a circle or you can draw everything except the like little antennas and stuff and you can just use a line tool or something to add little lines and details after. So usually when you're working in a painting any kind of painting, you would start kind of broad doing the larger areas, bigger shapes first, and then work to specific details and do like add the little details later. So with the pen tool though, you got to think about creating enclosed shapes. So with this image here, it's many different layers. On every layer they've added, um, or for every, color in every shape of buildings they've added a new layer so what this artist did was they had their picture in the background and they've decided what buildings are going to go on the foreground in the front and this doesn't have to be super accurate you guys you can kind of pick and choose but what they did is they did the the pen tool and they clicked clicked and traced all of these buildings do 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 went back down to the base and back across to where they started you know when you get that little circle icon that appears next to your pen tool and then they filled it and it looks like this then they turn this layer off and on the next layer drew this line of buildings like so do, 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 do. I went back to where they started now it's behind this one so um, whatever is in front cover up some of what's behind it in the layers so they went through and just did that there's a couple things I'm going to show you like how to cut out little areas like this um, but essentially they drew three layers and then when they were done they copied and pasted all three layers and then just reflected them in the water so if you have water it's kind of that it's really fast and easy um and then what i want you guys to do is add in the name of the city as well so this one's much simpler this one i kind of would like this better i think if it didn't have a black outline on that one like look at this one layer has a black outline on it. I personally tend to like things without an outline. This one was cool. The other thing you guys are going to do is choose a specific color scheme and you can kind of play with the colors after you draw it as well. But you know this is a very analogous color scheme fading from one color to the next on the color wheel. I would also say it's kind of warm. Where this is a complementary color scheme you know, opposites on the color wheel. Now this one, they did such a nice job on the bridge, but there's some random black lines that just shouldn't be there. The black outline, because there's no black outlines on everything over here, then why have it here? And you know, think about the font that you choose. It could should kind of maybe match the style of your drawing. It might be cool to put New York up here. You could put New York on a little line down here. You know incorporating the name is part of the composition as well but look at these and kind of break them up like this was drawn on the layer in front and then this blue light blue was drawn and then this one and then this one and then they put a, a gradient in the background this one's very simplistic but you know what like even the lettering here matches the style of the drawing did someone say something uh i was asking um what would be easier to trace the outline with like pen tool or like pencil tool? Pen for sure because pencil tool it every time you let off it stops the line and, and starts another path you have to like reconnect. So the pencil this will help you guys get more familiar with pen tool if you've been struggling. This will make you feel a little better. So we're definitely going to all use the pen tool for this. And I'm going to show you in just a sec and notice this one you guys doesn't have a reflection but it still has three layers so you can keep this as simple as you'd like and this is a nice cool um, analogous color scheme as well um, 
Let me show you one on my website that was really, really amazing. This was one of my overachieving students. <laughs> she um, had this really cool picture and there was mountains in the background. So she just simplified and had two values in the background to convey mountains. But the city was like in the mountains. And then there's obviously more than three layers here. So um, and then it was really cool how she did the ship, uh, the shapes of the boats that were in the water and then um, cut out the windows. So you can like choose to just cut out windows if you want, but you don't have to. Like this was one that took a little longer. And then she didn't include the name because she actually combined several different pictures to draw this. Like she had one picture in the background and she started drawing over top of it. And then I think once she got somewhere like here, like she got the, the, the buildings in the mountains, I think, in the background was on one picture. And then she like added these other ones in front from another picture. She just placed that in her document after she drew the other stuff. So this wasn't an actual place. I don't think, I think she combined a couple pictures. So there was no name in this one. I think that's the only one I have on my website. Um, but anyway, it's it's just like a fun little exercise and I'll give you a little bit of content, I think. Um, I generally start with this. Um, so I know like your final comps of your drawings for your line and um, color were probably a bit frustrating because you're just getting started in Illustrator. So hopefully this will give you a little more practice um, so we can all you know, kind of start fresh now. If you've been overwhelmed, don't worry. Um, I'm gonna show you and we're just gonna start fresh here. So, okay, let me do a quick demo here. So I went to creativecommons.org and this is where I, you can search for Creative Commons images. So this is where I just, I typed in, oops, Skyline specifically, and then Detroit, but I mean, anywhere is fine. Um, over here, like we said, like this would be the easiest one, but I think I found some better ones. You can, so you're not searching through all these and taking a ton of time, just maybe choose this one and this one, you know, so you can go through and look. Now, I wanna see, looking at those examples, what do I think is going to be doable and not take me forever? So you could do something like this, I don't, Oh, that is the arch. I'm like, that's so cool. You could draw something like this. Um, you don't want it to be too simplistic because you need at least three layers of building. So this one I might be able to get away with because I could do the arch on like the first layer and then maybe like this building on a second layer and then the big buildings on a third and then maybe a fourth layer with this one in the background and this one. Um, so you don't necessarily have to, you know, do... Uh, water line you know this one is hard for me to see the different layers but you could kind of pick some out like you could do that crane in the background and the bridge in the background you definitely could have three layers there okay let me just choose one <laughs> so I can see this around up here so this one allows me to share it I need to credit the author perfect that's fine it actually shows me right here how to credit the author great okay I'm gonna just like book mark this. That way I can come back to it really easily. So if I click on this, nothing's happening. I don't want to get too small of a version. So I'm going to go to the images website. Oh, and it came from Wikipedia Commons. So Wikimedia Commons. Now when you're in Wikimedia or Wikipedia, underneath the picture, it gives you several options for downloading. Now, Look at it, it tells you how many pixels. So this is a huge actually image that you could use. Um, I probably don't need it that big. I'm just gonna be tracing over it. So I'm, I don't know. I wouldn't choose the lowest cause everything might look pixelated. I'm gonna do somewhere in the middle here. And what we're gonna do is click on it and then just right click, save as. If there's a download button, I would click the download button but this one doesn't have that. So this is fine. I'm just gonna type Detroit. Okay, so looking at this, this is going to be a long and narrow page. That's okay with me, or you can decide to just crop this and use part of it. 
So I'm probably not going to use the whole thing. I'm going to open up Illustrator. I'm going to create a new. I'm going to do a horizontal layout and just leave it at eight and a half by 11. It's totally fine. Create horizontal because my picture is definitely very long and horizontal. And then we're going to file. Place the image on the page. I'm going to go to my desktop because that's where I saved it. Here it is. Just drop it there. Oh, that was a good choice. Sometimes if you would have chosen a really low pixeled image, it might be smaller on here. Um, if it, you chose the largest, it would probably, you'd have to probably scrunch it down and scale it down a bit. So here I'm going to look and just see. It's so tiny still. It's a lot of small detail. That doesn't matter though because it is vector. It's okay that it's tiny. I'm going to hold shift and zoom out. I think I want to do like the GM building. I don't, this is kind of boring to me. So maybe I'll get it on the page so I can just do a section. Now, I don't want to go much on this. I'm going to actually make this bigger and I'm going to change the way my page is laid out. So I really want to get to the end of this building and maybe like to here. Ooh, that little boat is cool too. So I can change my document size right now. Now this might get a little tricky if you go to print it. You might have to print it on like a larger page that has like a white, it might have a white border on it when you print it, but that's okay. This is mostly for our website. So um, I'm going to go up to document setup and edit artboards. So remember, you can go here if you need to change the orientation of the page. But what I'm going to do is actually drag this out. I could change the um, the width if I want to, but I'm going to just leave it for now. So I can go back and do this again later. I'm going to cut out actually. I'm just going to stop there. I don't. These buildings are identical. It's fine. I don't need it. I'm going to hit enter or just go to a different tool, and it'll close it out. So I this photo, crop it in Photoshop first, but all I'm going to do is just draw what's on my page. OK, so I've just kind of lined it up. So I'm drawing what's on my page. OK, is everyone with me still? So as I'm talking, guys, if you need to write like document setup, that is like a really important. Useful feature <laughs> uh, right now, I don't really know. I went to edit artboards. I don't really know how big this is. So when I go to print it, there's probably not a piece of paper that's exactly the size, so it'll probably like print with more white space around it or something, but that's OK. This could be a really cool banner for like a website or something because of the size, the length of it. OK, so I'm ignoring anything that's off to the side, and if that really bothers you, you guys, there's little things that I do. I'm going to zoom out control minus. You could like do a white rectangle <laughs> over top of this and like cover those areas if you just like if it's going to bug you because what you're going to do is remember you're going to lock this layer just like you did with your comps now actually look at this is kind of pixelated when i zoom in so just make sure you can see enough detail oh i can see enough i think i wouldn't go much more pixelated than that okay so now i'm going to add a new layer so my layers have to be open here I'm going to worry about color later. I'm just going to start tracing. So we're going to go to the pen tool. And remember with the pen tool, if you start tracing with the fill on, it's going to cover your picture and it's going to fill in a weird way. So I'm going to turn off my, my fill. And you can do that up here or down here. I just have a black outline. If it's hard to see black lines, you could make your outline. Oops got to bring the outline to the front. You could make your outline like yellow or something for now. I'm going to turn off the outline eventually, but just so it's easier for me to see. So I'm on a new layer. I've added a new layer in my layers panel. The other layer is locked. And now I'm going to start and do the first layer first. So you can see I maybe I should have downloaded a little higher res photo, but for this demo today, I'm going to keep it simple. OK, I'm going to just do the first layer of buildings. I'm going to ignore that boat. I might add in that boat later. So and guys, this can be simplified. OK, so when I'm doing this tool, I just connect the dots. The star next to the pen tool means it's going to start a new path. So I'm going to click. Go to the other edge of the page. Click. 
So I don't need to click a bunch of times. I'm just clicking once. It'll give me a straight line. Now I'm going to just try to pick out some of these front buildings. I really wish I could see this a little better, but that's OK. So click, click. Remember, if you hold shift, your line will be perfectly perpendicular or horizontal or at a 45 degree angle. But all I'm going to do is just go through and get the first layer of buildings. Now there's some of these that are kind of right next to each other. That's OK. I can just go. And if I make a mistake, you can go back and fix it in a minute with your white arrow tool. So I'm having trouble seeing this. If you hit backspace once, it'll undo your last line. And then remember, you have to reconnect to that line and you'll see that little backslash next to your pen. So I just wanted to go here. I realized I missed the second part of the building. So here I can add in trees or something. I could also, if I wanted to just do like click little wavy lines to kind of represent trees. I could do that. I could go and get this building, but you see I'm not like being super particular. I'm going to ignore this one because I feel like eh, it's kind of in front. Actually, I'm going to do some wavy lines here to represent trees. Let's do this guy and it's up to you if you want to put the top of this building. It's hard for me to tell if it's on there. Oop, that's a little wonky. And you're going to get the perspective of the building if you trace the outer edge. And all these are kind of in the background, so I'm going to just go over to this building now. It's OK if it's not exactly at the same plane or level as that other building. So if I hold shift, you guys, it'll make my lines a lot more accurate. I have this tendency to click on the right side of my keyboard or my um, mouse, which pad, which is causing that random menu to pop up. I'm going to ignore this building and just go across. There's all these shorter buildings. So anyway, I would just keep going. Now, if you want to try a curve here, remember you click and then you I would kind of go to where the end is and click and pull. Whoop. But now if I don't want the next line to curve again, I got to click back at the middle. If you're very intimidated by the curve, <laughs> You could just add a circle on top of it later. <laughs> OK, stop. This is so annoying. OK, I'm going to go back, go back. And now this is what's key, you guys. You want to go back to where you started. So once I get back to my original anchor point, you're going to get a circle. You want to do that because if you when you're done, you can just go and fill that in. And really easily see it. So now I can take my white arrow tool and like adjust some of these. If I double click on these anchor points, you know, you can fix some of these. If you want to as well, now add little lines and stuff. You could do that with the line tool, like some of these antennas. Remember, you can play with the thickness of the line, or you could just do it with your pen tool as well. Like if there were some other little details you wanted to add, say there was an antenna here. You do that, just hit enter to end the path. Okay, so this is all on that second layer above the photo. Okay, so there's one new thing I want to show you. And actually, I talked about it in, I think, the typographical logos, if you've already watched that demo. But if you have a window or something that you want to cut out, I'm going to turn this fill off again for a sec so we can see it. I'm going to put this to the front, turn off that. So I can just see the outline. So say I have some windows and I mean it would take a long time to cut out all these windows, right? But maybe you want to just do a couple areas on your building or maybe like something like over here. So this is the rectangle tool or you could use your pen tool. But look at this. If you have a rectangle and then you go to your arrow tool, you could hold down Alt kind of have to hover like when you start to see a double arrow. Like this is so tiny. But Alt will, I'm going to zoom in a little more. Alt will remember duplicate. So if I click on the line of this and hold Alt, let's see if that'll work. It's so tiny that it's having trouble finding that. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste. Control C, Control V. But look at it. It does copy and paste it over here. So <laughs> let's do this. If you click and drag over both of these. There we go. Now Alt's working. 
But you could like real quickly just draw a few windows like that. And I'm going to turn this back on the fill. Actually, let me make this a different color so you can see them when I turn them back on. OK, and now I'm going to click on this first shape that I made and turn on the fill. OK, so those were there. So what you'd want to do is draw out all the shapes that you want to cut out of this layer. And then when you're done, you can do something called Pathfinder. So Pathfinder, if you go to Window, and you go down to Pathfinder, it will come up here. I think there's another Pathfinder over here too. I always go to Window to find it though, but it looks like this. So what you do with Pathfinder is it joins or cuts away different things. So if I click and select over, let's see if it'll let me, I'm gonna select shape that I want to cut things out of and then the shapes that are on top of them. If I click this, it cuts them away. So see so you can see through. I'm going to undo that for a sec. Oh, it still works. OK, did you notice though the antenna that I drew? If I have that selected, it made that disappear. So if it does something like just try to select the things you only want to affect. So you can always select multiple things by just dragging over those things. Or you can select and then hold down the select tool. Or I'm sorry, I'm holding down the shift tool and I can select multiple things or I can deselect just random things if I need to if I hold the shift tool. But that can be really cool because you can cut things away. You can also use this feature. You don't have to do this for this, but um, if you have two shapes and you're like building something um, out of shapes, if you both shapes, you can like join the shape and make them one path. So there's a few different options you can try there. Okay, I'm almost done here. So I'm gonna zoom out. This kind of just becomes fun and you know, it's fun to just kind of play with the layers. When I finish this one, remember I can change my color later. After I refine this layer, I'm gonna turn it and add a new layer. And you can label these layers by double clicking on them if you want. Like this could be foreground, oops, if I could spell. And then you could do like mid ground and then background or something. Um, so now I'm just going to do real quick with this pen tool. No stroke or no fill, but just the stroke. Let's make this one a different color just so you can see it. OK, so now I'm going to choose the layers that I think are like in the middle. And you know, if you've got stuff that you know is in front like this building, it doesn't matter like if you go down below these <laughs> because they are going to block. I think I already did that white building. So try to think about what you've already done too. So anyway, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go. I think I didn't do this building here and here. And get some of those mid buildings. Now if I knew I drew a building in front of it, it doesn't matter. This is going to be behind that first layer. So I could just drag like move my pen tool across the bottom here until I get where I want it to go. Okay, I'm gonna, you would do a better job there. I'm just for <laughs> demo purposes. I'm trying to pick the middle buildings. Eh, backspace, go back, reconnect with this. See, this is crooked right here, but it's gonna be behind the first layer, so it doesn't really matter. Man alive, this key pad. I'm gonna back, back up, reconnect, that backslash. You gotta make sure you do that backslash. But guys, if something's not working for you, you can always send me your Illustrator file and I can show you real quickly in a quick demo video. Like I can say, oh, do this with your file. I can like literally show you on your file and uh, send it back to you so you can know real quickly what to do. Okay, so I am going to just keep, I'm using my fingers, two of them on the keypad to scroll over, but I could hold down the spacebar tool. We'll turn your thing to a hand as well and let you move. But I just find it easier to just use my fingers to like move along. And then here, I don't remember, but I could just go up and you would just try to be more careful. I'm just making a mess of this. I know I drew this in the first one, so I'm just going to cut across it and go back to this one. OK, but I think so when I get back, I'm going to put that one on the last layer. 
I'm going to go here. And then control minus, I'm going to zoom out a little. I'm going to go down. And go back across to where I started. Now this is covered in the first layer, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go back until I see that circle. And then I'm going to go fill it. And then I can go like make my little adjustments if I need to or add my things, cut away windows like it's going to bug me if these are all crooked, you know, so I can go through and just double click on these points. You can go to your pen tool and add an anchor point on a path like look if I go here. I can then go to my white arrow tool and make it into a point if I needed to. So now guys look at when I turn on my other one with this one. Oh. <clears throat> now I was thinking that the yellow would be in front of this and that's what I intended, but it actually is behind this. But look, you can take your layers and you can drag them around. So now it's in front. Oh, it actually dragged that layer into this layer. If you do something like that, just control Z if something weird happens. So I want to make sure my layers are closed. I click on it, click and drag it up so I look for that blue line to appear above the midground. So I was forgetting whenever you start drawing, you know, it's going to build from the background up. So I should have maybe done the background first, but it was easier for me to do the foreground first. You might just have to drag your layers around and now in here add a new layer. I would go through, turn off these layers. And then add in my last layer of buildings. When I'm completely done, we just do, 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 do. see my fills on right now, so it's doing like really weird things. So if I had another layer of buildings, going off the page, okay. I would want to pick a nice color scheme, you know. <laughs> um, this one is not. But just so you can see, once you build up those layers, then you can go to your background and I would add a layer behind that layer to do your background. Now your background color, you're just going to do a rectangle tool like this and just put the fill on, just do a rectangle in the background and just put the fill on to whatever color you would like. All right, so everything's on its own layer. You've got your background and then um, like your background color and then you've got your background of buildings, mid ground and foreground. You can do more than, you know, four layers or five layers. You might have tons and tons of layers. <coughs> okay, my last class we I showed them a few more color things, so I want to show you guys this because a lot of people like to do a gradient in the background. Um, a gradient, there's a few ways to do gradients, but in your swatches, if you go to window and you open your swatches, there's a little library here. And when you open this library, it's so tiny and so hard to see, but you'll get used to it. It's right here. Um, there's all sorts of color combinations. If you go to scientific, they have analogous, complementary, split, split complementary. So like you could do your whole thing like just using one of these color schemes if you wanted. Um, but anyway, they're little breakaway color palettes here in this library. There's a gradients one and there's one specifically for sky. So you could decide to do a gradient and play with some of these. Now, but if you notice the gradients going from like left to right and really with the sky, you'd want it to go from top to bottom. So for this, in order to change the direction of the gradient, there's this gradient tool on the left. <clears throat> so after you choose a gradient, if you fill like a square with a gradient, you can go over here and look it's showing it's going from light blue over here to dark blue. So I can change that by clicking and dragging. And the longer I make my line, the more blended and like gradual the gradient. If I make my line like little short line, it'll do like a little short gradient. And I can hold shift here too to keep my line really straight. So I could add in a gradient here. If you watched my tutorial on the type, 
you can click and add type text and I might go and add text and it's own layer too. And you could write like this could be the name of it and I could do Detroit and you could do all caps or you could do whatever you think goes with your drawing. Type and you've got your fonts. And you could go through and choose a font that you like that you think would go well with your drawing. <coughs> I'm just going to choose a random one here. OK, now I don't have black anywhere else in my composition, so maybe I change the. Thing here. Maybe I decide to. Put all of this. Looks like there's a mountain in my Detroit behind. <laughs> I could go with my keyboard here, drag out just a random. I don't know, like base here. And kind of play with where maybe I have this coming out. Maybe I have this going here. Well, that's kind of cool. And so you want to like make incorporate it into your design, so it's not like it's just barely there, you know? Um, maybe even like that in the sky. OK, the final thing is making a reflection. If you decide you want to do a reflection, what you can do is click these multiple layers. Shift, I'm going to hold shift and just grab them all, or I can just grab all of it. If you lock the background layer, remember there's this little lock here. If you lock that, you won't accidentally grab it. Or if you lock the Detroit layer, you won't accidentally grab it. So you could just click and drag over everything now. Um, so now what you can do is I I went over this in um, one of the demos before, but I don't know if you guys have all watched those demos. So if you grab these, you can group them together so they don't accidentally move when you copy and paste them. Because what we're going to do is just copy and paste these to make the reflection. So there's something called group in control G. We'll group these so now look at they move as one unit. You could also go to object and go down to group there. So I just group them so I can like copy and paste it and it doesn't like all get broken apart. So what I'm going to do is if you group, if you've got them together, I'm going to line this back up. Just put it on top of it like that. And you can distort this and make it kind of funky. Like I can click the top and just drag it and have a reflection. You can be very precise with this. And remember, you can right click, transform, and reflect horizontally. Now you have to move it. Sometimes I just use my arrows on my keyboard to do that. And then if you would like to, you can go back and um, if I'm on my arrow tool, I can go back to this document setup. If you need your page a different size now, you can go to document setup, artboards, edit artboards, and I could drag this lower. I could decide to split it. I don't know. I don't like to split my composition in half, so maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just leave part of this reflection up. Oops, I accidentally clicked off of it. I'm going to control Z that and go back. If anything weird happens, hit Control Z, you guys. This maybe I want this to be a little shorter. And so whatever's off the page will not print. So that will just not print, and that's okay. And now I can go back here and add a new layer in the background. And if I wanted to, I could play with maybe doing the reflection. I don't know, a different color. Maybe it's too much. <laughs> This is a terrible color scheme right now. I just want to throw that out there. Look at here. I was going to say, like, the color scheme makes it look, like, so, like, weird, the reflection. <laughs> so bad. <Come> with me. <laughs> so bad. If you do a gradient and, like, you don't like one of these pre-made colors in the gradient, guys, you can double click on any of these and change the color, too, like, in the gradient. If you're like, oh, look at, like, there's just so much. Just be really, like, mindful of looking at the tools carefully. Yeah, so this is hideous, <laughs> this color scheme. Um, and right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock. Let's see. Oh, these are all both on the same layer. This is grouped together, though. But So I could, if I wanted to, play with the opacity. It's just like barely there. 
Maybe I, I'm going to ungroup this. You can ungroup it, object, ungroup. Because I'm thinking now that it's grouped, I don't need this blue thing there. Or maybe I just need to move this up a little more. But see, I ungrouped it. So I'm going to control Z again. I was just thinking like, I don't need that big of a bar in between there if it looks funky. Is it there? Oh, that's just the background. Okay. If this color scheme is just horrendous, you know, you could unlock your layers and you can just go through and click different colors. Like now I could go in here and I could choose a color scheme. You could get one online even like we looked at before. Um, but I could go through and do like, okay, let's do a triadic because there's like three different. And maybe I go through, I have to ungroup this. I can right click and ungroup as well. Like now maybe I just do like, Maybe you want to do this before you make the the reflection because now I got to go back and do it the other way. Um, <laughs> I got to do it to this one too. So this one's got like a weird outline. Click, bring that to the front, turn it off. I know this kind of stuff, you know, takes some time. But maybe this, oh, I didn't change these. And this had the weird outline too. Let's get rid of that. Oh, I just got rid of my antenna. That's okay. I'll get rid of those for now. But I want to turn that outline off. I've had some people do a cool like yellow outline and make it like a nighttime scene, which has been really cool. So now, group those together again, copy, paste. No, <laughs> copy, paste, there we go. So look, and I could purposely distort this if I wanted. I don't want this to be as thick, so I'm going to bring that up. And then I can play with the opacity if I want. Like, there's options. You can, like, skew things, like, if you wanted to, like, drag it out. I'm trying to think of control. Nope, that's... If you right-click and go to transform, like, you can skew things. That means, like, or she shear something. I'll show you. If you click preview, it'll show you. Like if you wanted it to be distorted in a bit or at an angle a little bit, you can, um, if you watch the monogram video, which I don't think a lot of you have yet, there's different things like effects up here. You could blur just those if you wanted to. Like and make them a little bit blurry. Let's see. Takes a second. Whoa, I made it a little too blurry. So under effects, you can play with some of these. Um, but yeah, you don't have to do a reflection. That's completely optional. It's mostly just practicing that pen tool, practicing using those layers. And you guys, this is all recorded. So if you get stuck on something, just look on our post, our general post and fast forward, you know, through quickly and just kind of look to see what part, you know, if you can see me adding text at a point or something like that. Or if you want to see me blur that, just fast forward and try to get yourself through it. But basically, those those different layers on every layer, you know, you're having a different layer of buildings. Add in the text in the end. If you want to do gradients, remember, there's all these color combinations. You just have to get used to going, you know, back to your arrow tool to select things. Look at the fill and the stroke. Sometimes when you're on the pen tool, this fill and stroke starts, it'll disappear sometimes. See, it's gone up at the top now. So now if I want to change something, I have to do it here. And you can just put the stroke in the front or the, the fill in the front to change that. You can double click on it to change the color. You can have your swatches open to change the color. And with that pen tool, make sure you pay attention to the symbols that appear. And you want to draw with the outline on. Bring this to the front, turn the fill off until you're done. To end a line, hit enter. If you want to reconnect with that line, you have to see that backslash next to the pen tool. You got to pay attention to these marks. And when you go back to where you started, then it makes an enclosed shape. If I just end it here and I go and fill it, it'll sometimes do really weird things when it fills. So 
So with each pack, make sure you do an enclosed shape. Go back to where you started. You'll get the hang of it as you do it. It's pretty fun. This one's like mindless, which I really, really liked. Like it's just your tracing essentially. It's just trying to figure out what goes on which layer and don't be overly picky with that. You know, it'll be fine. It'll work out. <laughs> and remember window and pathfinder guys cuts things away. Yep. If you see it like online or something, a color scheme that you like, you can't just like take it, right? No, you can. That really? is, yeah, for sure. So like, um, and I forget what we did in which class, but we talked about this in one class and it might not have been in here. So if you go to Google and you type in like, okay, um, modern color palette or color scheme, you know, you can, you can pull up things like oh, this. No, I from like a maybe like a picture that's like yeah well I mean it's like you mean like a photograph or another drawing yeah a photograph you like like the color scheme or something like that yeah for sure because these are essentially photographs um so I'll do like on Pinterest a lot of time color schemes and they'll have like photos that they've taken the colors from like this oops uh you know, so you can look up like beachy color scheme or color palette um, and do any of these. Now watch, if I just save this image, so no one is ever going to find your work and say, wait a second, they used all the same colors that I used. You know what I mean? That's like really far-fetched. <laughs> so see, I've already I saved know, some people. Some people do do that, I think. I don't know. I think that the color scheme, you would be totally fine as long as your work is different, you know? Okay. Colors are colors for sure. But you guys in, so if I wanted a specific color scheme, if you, you can place, file and place an image, like say this one, I can place it off to the side. Use my arrow tool and just drag it up here as reference. Now I can take this eyedropper tool, which is here, or I on your keyboard, and you can sample these. Now look, it puts it right in my swatch. So I can, whatever, I put my eyedropper tool in. If I, now if I go back and I click on one of my layers, let's do this. And I can actually, with it selected, see how it disappeared? I can go to my eyedropper tool and it will just fill it. It's all grouped together right now. So that's why it gave me, it, it was like, what? I don't know what color it is because you're picking three different colors. So um, I'm going to ungroup that. But this is like a really cool feature. So a lot of times I'll grab something like this. And just when I click on the swatch, I open my swatches, it appears there, and I'll just like drag it and make my own quick color scheme. Oops, I just dragged it into my swatches. So I'm eyedropper to, to sample, and then I'm just clicking and dragging it here. And you can save different color palettes and stuff, make folders with them in it, but usually you know, there are only a few colors, so I'll click. And you should be able to click. I was kind of on the wrong spot on my keyboard again, or on my mouse pad, so it was giving me trouble. But you should be able to click and drag them down. So now I could go in and just fill them with these colors instead. Because sometimes you just see something that you really think is working well. Oh my gosh, so much better, right? <laughs> my eye is not as good as that. I need to unlock. Kind of. Yeah, see, it's getting there. Oh, so much better. And then if you have oh. other things too, okay, so I, I only have four colors here or five, that's not enough. So if I, if I fill this, if I click on this, same color as the background, it's gonna disappear. But if you double click on a swatch up here, you can pick darker and lighter versions of that swatch. So I could copy and paste this, put it in the background. You just have to pay attention to what layer you're on. And then maybe I want this to be a little different than the sky. So I'll double click on it and choose like a lighter version, but it's still the same color. So it's going to be like, it'll work, you know, it'll be harmonious with the rest of your colors. So I just took a color scheme from online, placed it off, off the side of my picture. I'm just using it as a reference. And I just took the eyedropper tool and sampled them and then dragged them into my swatches so I could save them.
And look, they did a way better job picking colors than I ever could. <laughs> so it's okay to use, you know, inspiration. Like you're not going to be able to track this drawing back to this. You never want it to be, you know, you can be influenced. You just never want to copy. You wouldn't want to redraw this with the same colors. You wouldn't redraw this photograph at all. You know, you'd have to take a picture of your own jellyfish or take 10 different pictures of jellyfishes and like try to combine it to make it your own. So it's unrecognizable from its original form. Actually, I like balancing color too. So this one might be nice if I use the same color up here. And I can just select it, go to my eyedropper tool, and then click. Now, if I go back here and I, like, lock up these layers so I don't accidentally grab them, I can really easily just select these. Group them. Copy, paste. Flip it, or I could go to transform. I might just skew this a little. I might wait that re rectangle in the center bar is a little bit thick, so I could always go back in and change it too. I like to use my arrow tools a lot to shift things really subtly. Look at even that sloppy, messy demo that I did looks pretty cool, right? It's not like completely like uninteresting. <laughs> um, you could even do just grayscales if you want, guys. Sometimes black and white with just one color is really a bold color scheme as well. So you don't necessarily like have to use something like from the traditional color wheel. Actually, this is from the color wheel. It's just like tints of the original colors, red, orange, you know, and orange, red. So it's kind of like, you know, but they put their own spin on it. It looks a little more coral and pink. But this really is a warm against cool color scheme. It's just playing with different combinations of those colors, different variations of those colors. So if I were done with this, I'm going to file, save as. Hello. Save it as an Illustrator file first, always, because if you want to ever make changes, change the size, things like that. You want to have this Illustrator file. And then you're going to file, export, export as PNG, use artboards. Remember, if I don't choose use artboards, everything around the page is going to be included. So got to choose artboards. High 300 pixels per square inch, white background is fine, and hit OK. Now I might have a little white or something over here that I have to fix. Just check it out and see that that saved correctly. There it is. And now that can really easily go up on my website. It's saved. It doesn't have that mess. So please be sure when you export, you click that box that says use artboards. If you don't, look at what well, this is what will happen. It'll save, see my page with everything else around it.